Here comes that warmth I talked about last video, yellows and oranges all over the screen, but we're going to have a storm system that moves into this area, bringing up some feisty storms for a lot of the northern United States, even eventually a lot of areas south and east of that. I've got the details on the entire pattern ahead, including my custom graphics right here, so stick around. One nation weather. Don't forget that many of the model maps that I use here on my videos are from Weatherbell, so if you want to check out a trial link to them, make sure you're going right down there in the description. Also, thank you so much to the 100 new subscribers I gained on my last video. If you're new to the channel watching this one, make sure you're considering hitting that button if you want more consistent, accurate, and easy to understand videos in the future. Hopefully, just like this one will be for you. Let's go ahead and jump right into this here, though, with our future radar and our pattern overview for the next several days. First day is our Friday, July 12, 2024. That's the day right after this video. I'm filming this late Thursday. Here we go into our Friday with not much rain anywhere from California and Oregon all the way in over there towards Michigan and Ohio. There's going to be an area, though, where we do have some heavier rain. This is a very focused corridor, but nonetheless, from far southeast Georgia all the way in up there towards southern New York and parts of Connecticut, we will have a better chance for some rainfall, especially in between those two sites I just mentioned. Heavy downpours in the mid-Atlantic region of the United States. That could certainly spark some flooding going out of Friday heading into our early Saturday as well. I am concerned about that heavy rain, but I'm also concerned about what this new pattern starting late on Saturday in this region of the north central United States could mean for down the line. We've got showers and thunderstorms in parts of Montana, North Dakota, really any of these areas circled over to Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, Illinois. Fair game for some scattered showers and storms. Don't really focus on the coverage on this model. Just expect some storms to go strong to even severe within this area as we will have some new low pressure forming that's going to begin to trek off to the east from here. In fact, here we go. Let's play this out late Saturday heading into our Sunday. Notice how a lot of that energy pushes east. We see a low pressure system form indicated by that L that I'm zooming in on right now in southeastern Canada. Heading into our late Sunday, that could bring another chance for showers and storms focused here from parts of Minnesota, Wisconsin, the upper peninsula of Michigan, all the way down there through the rest of Michigan, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, western New York. All fair game for at least some chance of storms, some of which could be severe. We'll break that down a little more in detail here in a second. This particular model, anyway, brings these storms with that first low, because now it's the first low, because there's one behind it. We can't call it just the low. Heading towards Maine, back down towards Ohio this entire corridor, possibly watching some storms late on our Monday, July 15th. Also, here's that second low, the new one to form. This one could even be stronger. I'm really concerned about Monday's possible storms that we could see coming out of southern Minnesota into parts of Iowa, Wisconsin, and Illinois. It could even be further southeast than that if you go with other models. And again, I'll be breaking that down because there is a lot of discrepancies regarding this secondary system and its speed in track. Sometime around Monday going into Tuesday, though, we'll see this move out of the Great Lakes towards the northeast. And then eventually that low will probably stall while it moves towards southeastern Canada, or at least the front along it will keeping the shower and thunderstorm chance up for this part of the country, going out of Wednesday, possibly even again and going towards Thursday and Friday of next week. Maybe even a flood threat could really begin to develop as that goes on. You see some of the training of those storms. Let's break down severe weather first, then we'll talk temperatures with the upcoming pattern. Let's look at that mid-level jet stream, 15 to 20,000 feet up, see what these ensembles are showing. Average out to indicate that we've got these blues on up here on our Friday, July 12th, from parts of Washington, Oregon, all the way in through Idaho, Montana, towards parts of the Dakotas, as well as western Nebraska. This is not an intense piece of jet stream energy. These have, models have really honed in on this. The ensemble collection that they form has indicated that we're not going to really see too much going on. But out ahead of that, we will have at least isolated severe weather possible in the northern plains Friday. By the time we go towards Saturday, though, you see those greens in Montana. The southeastern side of pieces of energy that move from the west-northwest to the east-southeast like this are always fair game for those better severe weather chances when you get the right ingredients. And ding, 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 we're going to have some of those ingredients. So we've got eastern Montana, maybe coming out of the front range there in eastern Wyoming, towards parts of the Dakotas, Nebraska, Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, Illinois. Those are those areas I mentioned earlier in the video. All fair game for some severe weather chances late on Saturday. We'll see the front end of that energy be more towards these isolated locations on our Sunday. The upper Midwest looking to be that focus as that first low, remember, moves out of the upper Midwest into the Great Lakes from Sunday heading into our early Monday. So that's going to be the one by the time we go towards the end of our Monday that will move towards the northeastern United States. But the energy, the upper level energy that's fueling all this low pressure is still behind that first low. I timed both of those lows out a second ago. Here's where the second low is really going to have that potential to get feisty. That northwest flow coming out of the Dakotas into Minnesota and Wisconsin on the southeastern end of that. That's why I'm a little more concerned depending on where this exactly sets up. That's still a little unknown. 
anywhere from Minnesota all the way towards the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley. Definitely be on the lookout heading out on Monday into Tuesday because that piece of energy remains feisty. In fact, the southeastern end of it and the southern corridor of it continues to look pretty strong for some of those storms as this begins to try and slow down, head towards stalling out towards the midpoint of next week. So there's still a lot of uncertainties out of this, but there's actually a lot that we do know, at least in terms of the intensity day by day, once you average some of this information out. Let's take a look at the Friday, July 12th time frame. Start out with tomorrow for our severe weather chances. Just a level 2 of 7 on my O&W severe scale. If you're not familiar with it, that means isolated severe weather is expected. That's going to be in parts of North Dakota and western South Dakota primarily as a piece of jet stream energy works its way through the area, sparking those storms. Once again, if you are in some of these dark rain areas I'm zooming in on right now, definitely be prepared for the best chance of isolated severe storms Friday. Going towards Saturday, this is when, when I was showing you the overview, things begin to ramp on up. And just like that, we've got a level 3 of 7 already being predicted on my own W severe scale coming out of North Dakota into some parts of South Dakota as well as Minnesota. That's where the best chance of scattered severe weather will be. While we're lacking some of that specific short-range guidance and those details so it's a little uncertain, it is likely that some clusters of at least wind and hail producing storms will move its way through this area. So again, make sure you're ready if you live in the north central United States. Could be getting some severe weather there on our Saturday. And then as we go towards Sunday, Day. Now we're looking at a severe zones graphic. This shows where I think the best chance for me to at least put down that isolated risk for severe storms will be southeast Minnesota, parts of Iowa, Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan. You're in that spotlight right now. Other areas could certainly get in it once we get closer, but this is where that highest confidence for severe weather based on storm prediction center, based on model guidances, and why I'm putting that down there for Sunday. Then as we go towards Monday, July 15th, very similar area as that second low moves into this area. Now you're like, what about the first low? Because that moved towards the northeastern United States. There's just not enough confidence, and that's a big problem with the forecast right now. I don't like to just, you know, throw very obscure details out there, but there is a lot of confidence issues going on right now with this forecast just because of how the ensembles are performing. In fact, let's look at these GFS ensembles and really show you why we're struggling. This is not a struggle. Going towards our Saturday, look at this. Saturday in the morning, already some showers and storms ongoing in the target region that we're going to have severe weather likely fire up later in the day. This is where I've got that 307 out of the Dakotas and the Minnesota surrounding spots. So get ready heading into the afternoon and evening. We'll see some new storms fire up across this region. As you see right there, some of those grays and greens getting going. The greener the color, that's definitely when you're getting more into the certainty for heavier thunderstorms. However, this is where that certainty decreases and the struggle increases as we head towards our Sunday. Look at that. There's low number one. The GFS ensemble members average out to indicate a low will be somewhere right there near the northeastern tip of Minnesota. There's a lot of grays, dark grays, but no greens indicated for heavier thunderstorms anywhere from Minnesota all the way there towards parts of Pennsylvania and New York. That's already a problem. It has that first low head eastward quickly, and look at the second low. It's already northeast of Michigan by Monday afternoon, whereas the European model would have that much further back towards the west. So anywhere in here, we'll probably be seeing some of the best storm chances going towards Monday, probably out of two different low pressure systems. But again, it's very uncertain how these lows are going to time up with that jet stream energy I showed you. And that is why there's very low confidence in exactly where the highest threats are going to be. Because these have the potential to be higher risk days with instability really in place for storms. It's just very uncertain. Definitely put more confidence in that Wisconsin green shade for the heavier storms than any of those light greens that you see on screen right there, though. Here we go towards Wednesday. There's actually more high confidence in this than we probably have for Monday right now lingering boundary stalling out with some storms towards the southeastern United States that could be especially focused over some parts of that southeastern quadrant in Tennessee Kentucky as well maybe even into West Virginia and look at some of those grains increasing as late next week goes on maybe a stalling boundary produ producing a flood threat down there in the southeastern United States the Carolinas included Let's look at those temperature anomalies now shift gears to the temperature side of things maybe we have more confidence in this because actually we do and one of the biggest things in confidence that we have right now is with this ridge in the west, Washington, Oregon, California, all the way to the east towards the Rockies, 5 to 10 to 15 to 20 degrees above normal for this time of the year in the temperature department. As we close out this week, this is on our Friday, July 12th that you're looking at right here, and it looks like a very hot day, especially in those valleys of California. And I'll look at the exact temperatures with you here in just a second, but let's go ahead and continue looking at these anomalies heading through the weekend. 
Closing out the weekend on our Sunday, July 14th, temperatures are now warmer than average over a lot of the eastern United States by at least a few degrees. And this time of the year, seasonable temperatures are in the 90s for a lot of this this area I've circled. So definitely prepare for some temperatures to be pushing 100. And I'll show you again exactly where that is here in just a second. From Nebraska and Kansas down to the Carolinas, looking like a very hot day Sunday. Some of those anomalies are going to only intensify near the Appalachians Monday going into Tuesday afternoon. But we start to notice a little bit of a change creeping in from the north. While we have this area of warmer than average air from parts of New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, all the way back down there towards Kansas and Oklahoma, temperatures will be 5 to 10 degrees above average in this area. Not only are we watching that, but we're also watching some of this cooler air that's going to be creeping in out of the Dakotas, Nebraska, Minnesota, and Iowa. There's a lot of confidence between the GFS member, ensemble members as well as the European ensemble members that there will be this 5 to 10 degree below average air moving in there. That's going to only continue to solidify over this region and sink southward behind that stalling front heading towards the back half of next week. So from Kansas and Nebraska all the way back towards parts of, say, New York and Pennsylvania, areas in between like Chicago, Illinois, northern Indiana, northern Ohio, and southern Michigan, this is where we'll have those focal areas for 5 to 10 to even 15 degree below normal temperatures for this time of the year. This is where we've actually seen a lot of that cooler air just moving on through with systems throughout the summer. Look where it's going to remain hot, though. The Pacific Northwest, we've got Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming in that focal red zone there, even as we had towards the end of next week. So let's look at my temperature anomaly graphic for Monday going into Tuesday, July 15th into July 16th. I showed you this in the last video, but just want to rehash that from Idaho all the way down here towards Nebraska and Missouri. This is one area where we're going to have temperatures as much as 15 degrees above average early next week, both days. Also there along the East Coast Corridor, we'll be watching temperatures around 5 to 10 degrees, maybe even locally 15 degrees above normal to start the week. Look at how things change and transpire, though, going towards the 17th and 18th. This is your Wednesday and Thursday. Yes, we're going to have warmer than average air, really focused on up there in that Pacific Northwest zone I was showing you just now on the ensembles. But we're going to have a little bit of a change beginning to shift into the Central and Great Lakes regions of the United States. Look at this, the Midwest parts of Iowa. We've got Wisconsin, Michigan. Those are the three states where the entire state is covered in the blue. About 10 degrees below normal, at least, already being anticipated. I have pretty high confidence in that. So get ready for that cool down, and that will continue heading southeast by the very end of next week, especially if we're right behind that stalling front, depending on how far south it goes. Let's look at those daily high temperatures real quick, though, heading into the weekend. Starting with our Friday, July 12th, look at this. 100 plus in those valleys of California, 110 plus in some locations. Las Vegas, Nevada, near 117. Boxed temperatures on your screen, parts of Utah, Colorado. Those indicate record high temperatures never seen before since records have been capped. Temperatures this warm. This is very dangerous heat. And if you get under a heat alert of any kind from the National Weather Service, please take that seriously. Always check weather.gov for your latest alerts on that. Meanwhile, in the east, we're fairly seasonable, but some spots are in the southern United States, at least a little bit above seasonable averages. Friday, we'll continue to see 90 shift north going in towards our Saturday and Sunday. Look at this corridor right here. This is a hot spot for 95 to 105 degree range temperatures going towards the back half of our weekend. Look at that. Denver, Colorado in the 90s to near 100. We've got a lot of Kansas in that 100 degree to 105 degree range. Down to the Carolinas, Tennessee, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, we've got upper 90s. And records could continue to be broken in southern Appalachia Monday, all within this heat box. We're going to see a lot of this area light up with those hottest temperatures going towards the early part of next week. Really strengthening with southerly flow ahead of that next front that's going to eventually move through. Not really seeing the effects of that on the northern U.S. quite yet, though, as even some 90s will be pushing towards southern Michigan. Look at this, though, by Tuesday into Wednesday, you see 70s up there in that region, and that is that cool down really beginning to take effect. That is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do, again, please make sure you're considering hitting that subscribe button down below, hitting the like button, dropping any comments, questions, concerns you have right down there below as well. That's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one, which will be Saturday, probably. One Nation Weather.